if you have a wear case, is there always loss of vertical dimension? Right? Not always. So if you look at someone like Brian here, Brian has some old uh, PFM crowns on those uh, maxillary anteriors. If you didn't notice, those are that's uh, 6 through 11, just to be clear. Uh, he's got a lot of wear, right? He's got a lot of wear. Is this related to an envelope of function? Does that have to do with the lingual contours of the uh, uppers? Um, is there also, though, some other issues going on not related to those crowns where he's flattening out the cusps, he's eroding. So in this case, when I start to see that there's erosion and wear on those molars, to me I start feeling like they're probably they're, they're losing their vertical dimension. It is certainly possible. It's certainly possible that the teeth are erupting as they're wearing and their VDO doesn't change. Right? So you can picture that. I don't know that it matters, but I'm looking to see is, is there wear on these posterior teeth along with the anteriors. So we look at someone like Michael here, and you can see that he has significant wear around all the teeth. So is it likely that, he is, that his VDO is dropping? I think it's likely. The question is, does it matter? So someone like Cindy, with all that wear that we looked at earlier, we look at her posteriors. There's not a lot of wear on these posteriors, a little bit. There's been some restoration, so it's kind of hard to tell. We don't know with Cindy. But when we look at Donna, our next patient, you looked at Donna earlier. So what's really interesting with Donna, you see all the excessive wear on the anteriors. But you see very little wear on the posterior tusk cusps. So if someone like Donna, I doubt that she's lost vertical. I think that she's worn the anteriors and as they've worn, they've super erupted and now we're using orthodontists to move them back into position. So not all patients who wear their teeth are losing VDO. But the question is, does it matter? Because to me, it's not about have they lost vertical dimension. The question for me is, do I need re restorative space? Do I need room to rebuild these teeth? So if I look at Sam here, and I want to try and create natural formed lower incisors, that's what's going through my head. I need to create naturally formed lower incisors. Can I do that without changing his vertical dimension? Possibly. My goal in mind is to create that. If I'm going to create that, am I going to have to open up his bite? So if I start doing some bonding, is there, do I need to open up his bite or do I have other options? Okay, so for me the key is I need to create restorative space. That's the bottom line. Whether I open their bite or not, I don't care. The problem for me or the issue for me is I gotta create the restorative space. So we'll talk about how do we do that. So here's Fran. Fran's got a couple old crowns that she needs replaced on eight and nine. So we can do some stuff, we can do a gum lift, we can do some things to cosmetically make things look better. Do we need to open or bite just to do a couple crowns on the front teeth? Well, when you look on the inside of the mouth, now we start to see some issues, right? So if I wanted to make her new crowns of PFMs and just have a thin metal on the lingual, on the palatal, then I could do that. Will I get the best aesthetics out of a crown if I'm doing that? Not at all, they look kind of crappy, right? Plus, am I going to ignore the fact that she's eroded away all the enamel on her anteriors, right? So if I want to create space to restore these, we have to consider what are our options. Can we open her bite, right? Or can we do something else? And that's the issue, that's our question. Because we want to take Fran from there to there how do we make room for the restorative on the palatals? So the question is, can we, op can we restore those lost tooth structure? Can we, re can we get the restorative space we need without opening vertical dimension? So sometimes, this is Margaret. She's got a bunch of wear on her teeth. 
and we want to make her teeth longer, so we're going to do some prototype bonding without opening her vertical dimension, without changing anything at all, to improve her smile. So the question is, is that going to maintain, or is she someone that I need to open up their bite because I've just made her bite deeper, right? So this is with her prototype. Six weeks later, we went out three months, and we actually restored her teeth at this, and she was actually able to tolerate the change in the length of her teeth. She wears a night guard now, and she's been fine for years and years and years. So some patients, we can restore them longer, and if we give them a protective appliance, they could be okay. The thing is, though, I'd rather figure out in my prototype therapy that Margaret's okay to deepen her bite, add in size or length, get anterior guidance, and not have to open up her bite or make changes, and just keep on going, and I can figure that out through prototypes. If it fails, then I know that the system won't tolerate that. The system won't tolerate me giving her a deeper bite with, in that situation, I'm going to either have to open her bite or I'm going to have to move her teeth. Does that make sense? Margaret didn't want to go through ortho. Margaret didn't want to do a big comprehensive case. She just wanted her front teeth fixed. So I said, all right, well, let's try it. Let's see if it'll work. And for Margaret, it worked. But it's not going to work for everybody. But I'd rather go through a prototype phase, figure out if it's going to be successful. And if it fails, then we can take a step back and say, we tried it. So here's the other options. And the nice thing about doing it in prototypes is we can take it all off because I didn't prep the teeth. I can literally remove it. I can make them shorter. If I do it in porcelain and she has failure, it's a nightmare. Anyone agree? Is there a bigger nightmare than that? That's like a big nightmare, right? right? When you do porcelain veneers and they start popping off, that's a bad day, right? Or they start chipping. Yeah, chipping's worse, right? So again, our goal of treatment is to create restorative space, and we have three ways that we can create restorative space.